All right, welcome back to the assignment portion of Lab 1. Let's move into this and see what is here. Um, okay, so sorry to do this, but we have a little bit more background to cover before we get into the details of the assignment. So uh, previously we covered low-level file I.O. in MATLAB, and now we're going to talk about a specific file format that we're going to use as a format that we can exchange data, signal data, between uh, MATLAB and C. So <clears throat> when we refer, so, so what we're talking about is um, what we're going to call a raw binary file that will have a very small structured header followed by samples of signals. So um, the way the header is going to look, it, it's going to be a 20-byte header and it will consist of five integers, each one being four bytes. And these integers are going to be, um, the first one will be the number of dimensions in the signal. So for audio, that would be one. Um, imagery, that would be two. Um, video, that would be three. <coughs> the number of channels is the next um, integer that we'll encounter in the file. Um, the number of channels would be one for monaural audio, two for stereo audio, three for um, a, a color image or color video, um, and so on. And then uh, DIM0, DIM1, and DIM2 are the sizes of the signal object. Um, DIM0 is the first dimension, DIM1 is the size of the second dimension, DIM2 is the size of the third dimension. So um, whether or not the signal needs three dimensions to describe it, we'll go ahead and use, um, we'll, we'll always insist that all three of these uh, dimensions appear. Okay, and, and then after that, all, the rest of the file consists of uh, the data, the signal samples, um, written out as floating point data type. And uh, what that means is this is actually going to make files larger than they need to be, usually, but this will provide a very convenient interface for C, and, and it means that we don't we won't have to worry about a lot of things in C. <clears throat> okay, so let's let's go ahead and take a look at what an audio file might look like. Um, so let me see what this says here. Okay, so uh, on the right hand side, let's just take a look at the the picture that I've drawn here. This shows what would appear in the file. So um, as described previously, we'll have a f uh, five integers written out first for an audio data. For audio data, the number of dimensions is one. Uh, the number of channels could be one or two, or it could be more than that. But in this example, I'm, there are two channels, so this represents stereo audio. Um, DIM0 is the length in samples of the audio signal. So L here represents the length. Um, I'm assuming that the length of the signal is not larger than a four byte integer. Um, DIM1 and DIM2, because this is a, a one dimensional signal, normally we would write DIM1 and DIM2 and set both of these equal to zero. However, for audio data, it's useful to keep track of the sampling rate and to have that saved with the data. So we'll go ahead for audio data only and um, hijack the use of DIM1 and we'll write out the sampling rate here. And again, we're assuming that the sampling rate is an integer. And then finally DIM2, we'll just set that to zero. Following this five byte header or five integer header, we will write out the signal samples and um, uh, note the order that the samples are written out. So it's sample zero, channel zero, sample zero, channel one. Then we go to sample 1 for both left and right channels, and sample 2, left and right channels, sample 3, left and right channels, and so on. So that's the way the rest of the, f the file is formatted. And so we need to, in MATLAB, if we read in a stereo um, audio signal, we need to write it out in such a way that it, it's compatible with this format. We'll just agree on that this is the format that we'll use, and um, we'll, we'll use this in C when we're reading data in, and we'll, we'll use this then in MATLAB as well so that we're compatible. 
Okay, so that's what an audio file would look like. Let's take a look at an image file. Again, we have the same uh, five uh, integer header. Um, an image has two dimensions, an X dimension and a Y dimension. This is a color image, so it would have three channels, one for R and G and B. Um, if, it were, if it were a grayscale image, we would say the number of channels is one. Um, DIM0 and DIM1 are the um, row and column dimension of the image. And then it's a two-dimensional object, so we set DIM2 to zero. Following that, we will begin to work our way across the top row of the image, writing out the RGB value for each pixel um, in sequence. So the first three floating point values written out to the file are the red, green, and blue values for pixel the first pixel on the first row. And then we go to the second pixel on the first row and write out its RGB values and so on until we get to the end of the first row. Then we'll step down to the second row, go to the, th go to the third row and fourth row and so on until we get to the bottom of the image. I don't have a picture for videos, but um, the way videos would, would be stored is we would write out <clears throat> the uh, number of dimensions would be three, the number of channels would be three if it's color, one if it's grayscale. Then we would write dim zero would be the number of rows in the video, uh, a, a video frame. Dim one would be the number of columns in a video frame, and dim two then would be the number of frames in the video segment. And then the data would be written out one frame following the other. So we would write out the first frame as if it were a color image or a black and white image. And then the second frame as if it were a, an image. And the third frame and so on until we get to the end of the video. So that's basically what these bullets talk about. So that's um, an overview of what the file format will be. And that'll make it easy to read and write data in C and in MATLAB and just exchange data between these two platforms. Okay, so the actual so so now we come to the actual assignment. And um, this is going to exercise some of the things that we've learned about um, in this lab so far. <clears throat> so there are th there are three parts. Um, one part for for audio signals, one for imagery and one for videos. So so what uh, what we're doing is writing some helper functions that we'll use later in the semester. <clears throat> so um, here under number one, and, and I will provide links to these files, flute22.wave and music.mp3. One of these is uh, monaural, the flute signal is monaural, and the music signal is um, stereo. Um, so uh, what I'm essentially asking uh, all of us to do here is to write a MATLAB function uh, named audio to bin that reads signal samples from an audio file and writes the signal samples to a raw binary file. Part B is to write a MATLAB function called bin to audio that does the reverse. It pulls in data from a, a raw binary file and writes out an audio file. Um, part C here will use the sound command to, to hear what the audio sounds like. We'll also make subplots and plots of the signal. We'll look at an FFT so we can see at the spectrum of the signal. We'll also look at a spectrogram. And then um, we'll write an oscilloscope script to visualize what the audio looks like over a 10, second, 10 millisecond window. So that exercises some of the handle graphics stuff. Now remember that you can go back to the slides that I've shown previously. These slides will be available on the course website so that you can look through them and see and review how to produce this oscilloscope-like effect on the screen, how to produce spectrograms, how to do spectral plots, and so on. Um, one of the things I haven't talked about to this point is how to write MATLAB programs. And there are two ways this can be done. One is to write MATLAB scripts, which is just to create a file with a .m extension and then to just put commands, MATLAB commands, the same sort of commands that you would enter in at the command line, you just put those one after another in a MATLAB script, and uh, then at the command line you can just type the name of that script, leave off the .m extension, and MATLAB will run in sequence those commands that are in that file. The second way is to write an actual function, and so uh, I'd like to illustrate how that could be done, and I'll, 
I'll do that by writing this audio to bin um, file uh, function. So um, at the MATLAB command line, we can type edit audio to bin. It will pop open an editor. And um, then uh, we can begin to enter our commands. A function uh, is different from a script in that the very first line of a function uh, needs to begin with the word function. And uh, then you would put the return value equal to the name of the function. And then you would put the arguments. Um, and then at following that, you can, you can put everything that you want to put in the function. Uh, the difference between a script and a function is that uh, in a script, all the variables in the MATLAB workspace are visible. They're, that is, they're in scope. Um, in a function, none of the MATLAB workspace variables are in scope. So basically, a function is like starting a MATLAB, a fresh MATLAB um, instance, and the only thing that's available to you are the arguments that come in through uh, the function call. Um, so I might have a return value of x, and at some point I need to have a return function, a return statement. So this will force the end. That's the end of the end of the function. Um, you can put on, only put one function in a file. Um, I think there are exceptions to that rule now, but um, let's see. Um, yeah, that's it. So, so basically, when you encounter this return statement at the end of the function, whatever value is currently stored in the x variable will be the return value of the function. Um, one of the differences between MATLAB and C is that you can return as many things as you want from a MATLAB function just by putting them in a, uh, a list, as you see here. Well, the audio to bin function that I'm going to write will not have, at least I don't envision having, any return values. But we will need um, an, if, an input file name. Let, maybe we should call it in file, and we'll also have out file. And let's, let's go with that for now. Um, I also want to have the capability that if I don't specify an output file name, <clears throat> that it will create one automatically derived from the input file name. So um, let's just test a few things here in the command window. So let's suppose that in file is, is equal to file.name.wave, for example. Um, what, what I want the output file name to be is file.name.bin. So we'll use bin as the extension for these binary files, these raw binary files. Um, so I need to construct the output file name. Uh, basically, what I want to do is just change this .wave extension to a .bin extension. So what I'm going to do is um, get an index, which is um, equal to the maximum. Well, actually, let's do this in pieces. Let's try this. stir find is a built-in MATLAB function for working with strings. And what I'm going to do is search through the in file name for a, a period. And it looks like there are two of them. There's one located at character number 5, and there's also one over here at character number 10. So what I would like to do then is say out file is equal to um, a concatenation of in file from 1 up to max of stir find in file because there might be more than one period in the file name. Uh, let's see. And then I would like to concatenate that with, actually, let's, let's just see what that produces. File.name dot. So what we need to do is say, oops. We'll concatenate that with the string bin. And hopefully, 
Oh no. Something bad has happened. Sorry for that, uh, don't know what was going on there, but anyway, now I have um, in file is equal to file.name.wave and out file is file.name.bin. So let's just go ahead and put that um, here in our function, but we, what we need to check to see how many um, input arguments there are. So we'll say if narg in is greater than one, or maybe we should say equal to one, then we will construct the output file name. Otherwise, we'll just use the, the output file name that was passed in. OK. Now, um, we're going to read in the audio data. So let's do this by saying x, comma, fs equal audio read in file. And uh, without any other information, we'll just read in the entire file. And then we need to do the low-level file I.O. for writing out the binary file. So I'll say FID is equal to fopen. I'm going to say out file, write binary. We'll go ahead and close the file. Um, and then we will uh, write out the header. So we're going to say fwrite to this file. And now we need five integers. Now we know this is audio data, so we're going to put a 1. Then the number of channels is going to be size of x, comma 2. So if there's more than one channel, they're read into the columns of the array x. So if x is monoral, it will be um, n by 1. If it's stereo, it'll be n by 2. And so size, comma, 2 re will return the second dimension of that multidimensional array. So that's the number of channels. Let's see what else we need to have in our header. OK, so here's our audio header. We need the number of dimensions, which is 1 for audio, the number of channels, which we will derive from whatever comes in. Uh, and then we need to output the length the sample rate and then zero. So let's let's go ahead and do that. So we will say size x comma one, which it will be the length. Then we need the sampling rate, which is fs. And then we need a zero. So there are five integers. We'll make sure they're formatted as int. And we're going to write that five element array all at once out to the output file. Um, let's, let's go ahead and read in the stereo signal just so that we can uh, discuss what, what will happen here. Let's see, and I'm going to undock the editor. Move that out of the way so we have more uh, workspace. Um, so let's say um, x comma fs equal wave or audio read so the sampling rate is 32,000 samples per second uh, the signal X is about what two million samples by two columns so notice that the length is about two million the number of channels is two if we said plot X we would get a plot of this signal. We could zoom in and see what this looks like. There's singing and guitar playing in here. So we see, we see the left and the right channels being plotted here. Now, we need to write the samples out in a different order. If I say y is equal to x colon um, this will construct an array 
that is 4 million by 1. However, the samples for the left channel and the samples for the right channel are not interleaved. And so one of the ways we can interleave the samples is, that, well, there's a variety of ways we could do it, but we, we could use the reshape command or we could um, just use the colon operator. But uh, what we need to do is use the colon operator. Uh, we have to remember how the colon operator works. Let me, let me just review that briefly. Um, let us uh, <clears throat> construct an array 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So here A is an array that has two rows and five columns. And if I apply the vector operator to A, notice that um, it's, in, it's, it's um, arranging the outputs in column order. So it takes the first column in the A array, takes that 1, 6, and puts them in the output array, and then the, the 2, 7 follows, and then the 3, 8, and so on. So if we could create an array that has the left channel in the first row, and the right channel in the second row, then we would have, if we, then we could apply the colon operator and our samples would be interleaved in an appropriate order. Well, right now what we have is our samples are arranged in columns instead of rows. And so the way that you exchange rows and columns is just using the transpose operator. So what I'm going to do is say x is equal to x transpose. Now I'm going to display the first, um, the two rows, one colon ten. So now it's now I have the left channel in the first row, the right channel in the second row, and then if I say um, x colon, oops, well. If we, if we now apply the colon operator, then things will work the way we want them to. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say x is equal to x transpose. And then I'm going to say f right fid x colon. And I'm going to format these samples as floating point. And then we're done. Um, I might do one small modification. I think I'm going to transpose the data first and then when I use the size command I'll need to put size 1 here and size 2 here. But uh, one of the things we have to recognize is size x uh, spits out a vector so all I need to do then is um, so, so now size, the first element of of size x is 2, the number of channels, which is the correct argument, and then we have the length. So if I just say size x, um, this will work perfectly well. After we close the file, uh, that's just a little bit cleaner now. Um, after we close the file, um, we can return from the function. So there's a simple MATLAB function now that uh, does the operation that we wanted it to perform. Let's go ahead and test this um, function. And let's see. Uh, there's not really a good way to test this, but one of the things we can do is um, do this. So we can check that. Um, let's go ahead and run this and see see what happens. So I'm going to um, say audio to bin, and I'm going to give it the file name music.mp3, and we'll go ahead and require it to construct the output file name. So it looked like it did the, the output file name construction correctly. Let's also do a 
directory listing. Actually, mm. well, if we go out to the directory. Let's look at what we have. We have music mp3. Note that it's 765 kilobytes. And we also have music.bin which is about 16 megabytes. As I said this is going to uh, mp3 is a compressed audio format so now we're, we're uncompressed and we're also saving the samples as 32-bit floating point values one for the left channel, one for the right channel. So this is a big file. Um, let's look back at uh, the requirements here. So we could also write a program, maybe, maybe we should just do that very quickly here. Uh, we could also uh, create a new program that will be a function has no return arguments, uh, bin to audio, in file, out file. And we should probably do the same thing that we did before. Uh, let's go back here and we'll, we'll just generate the output file name. Copy, paste. If one is not supplied, we'll go ahead and generate it. and. Um, I guess one of the things that we have to do is agree on the output uh, data format, um, the default output data format, which will be a WAV file format. Um, if, you, if you want to override that, you have to explicitly provide the output file name. OK. Now um, let's uh, open the binary file. read binary, close it. Now we want to read in the first five values which will be the um, these five integers. Um, we could do that one at a time. We could say um, ndim fread fid1 integer. We could read all five at once uh, and nchan Then we have dim zero, dim one, and dim two. And uh, lastly, what we need to do is read in. to the end of the file, all of the floating point data. So now we have all of that data read in to memory. If it's an audio file, um, if it's a stereo audio, the samples are interleaved and so we need to um, con reconstruct uh, the audio uh, in the proper format so that we can save it to the output for, uh, wave format. So uh, the way that we'll do this, um, so we now have one long array. Um, we can use the reshape command. So I'll use x is equal to, uh, in fact, I'm just going to use this, reuse the variable x. Um, reshape. And I'm going to say reshape x. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to reconstruct an array that's the number of channels tall. So uh, remember MATLAB. <coughs> So the reshape command takes elements from this vector um, x, and it constructs the first column of a matrix. Then it constructs the second column and the third column, and so on. So uh, we want it to be n channels tall, and we want it to be dim 0 wide. And that's uh, what we'll do there. We'll also set the sampling rate to be dim 1. And then we will call audio write. Oh, I'm sorry, we need to transpose this so that it's in columns. So we'll transpose the data. Audio write. And the format is, can't 
remember what comes first, so we'll just do a quick little help. File name, the data, and the sampling rate. So here we'll say um, out file, the data, x, and the sampling rate. And then we're done. So there is the output. Um, there's, our, there's our function called bin to audio. And we can save that. That's fine. And let's, let's uh, go ahead and uh, pull this back in. So I'm going to say bin to audio. And we're going to say music.bin. Read that back in. And we'll write the output to music.wave. Uh, we could also, if we wanted to, write the output to music. See, the original source file is .mp3. So we'll, we'll say music um, test.mp3. So this will reconstruct an MP3 file, maybe. Well, um, for some reason, uh, it can read MP3, but it, at least on this computer, I need to dig into this some more. Anyway, that failed. Let's go ahead and take a listen to the original and then we will also listen to the, um, the binary file. In fact, you know what I think I want to do? I want to edit this. Um, I think I want to return x and fs from this program. And I think I want to do the same here. but I don't want it to be in its modified form. So I'm going to say X, I'm going to transpose it again before I return. This will be convenient um, to have those return values. So uh, let's see. Well, we're, gonna, we're not going to do this. But let's go, let's go out to the file system. And uh, we have music.wave. Let me play the original music mp3. try anyway. Okay, well maybe we will not try. <laughs> uh, to date this computer has not impressed me as far as uh, ability to do um, multimedia sorts of things. Alright, well it looks like uh, that's not going to work. I wonder if we did this. Let's try this. So um, let's go back to audio to bin. We'll read in all that data. I'll plot the data. And then I will say sound sc x 1 to 5 times fs, so the first 5 seconds. And we'll do both columns. And we'll pass in the sampling rate and see if that works. Okay, so that was the first five seconds. Um, if we also call, if we call bin to audio and do the same thing, mm. sorry, let's try this one more time. Let's plot the data to see what it looks like. It hasn't changed, which is the way it should be. And um, if we do a sound, so this is data that came in from the audio file. Let's just make sure that uh, the sound's the same. Okay, sorry, that was, that was the data that came in from the binary file um, and compared to the data that came in from the original audio file. So it looks like our two functions, um, audio to bin and bin to audio, um, accomplish the intended purpose.
So I will let, uh, so we, we just used, I just used the sound SC command. SC stands for scale, so it scales the signal before it sends it to the speaker. <clears throat> um, I will let uh, the students uh, work on the spectral plot and the spectrogram plot and the oscilloscope plot. Um, the, uh, the functions for image to bin and bin to image will look a lot like the audio with the big difference being um, the header that's written out and the reshaping of the data that needs to take place. So uh, the same is true for the video. On the, on, on a comment on the video, for video, I would recommend that you read a single frame in at a time. Uh, let's see, help. If you look at Video Writer, um, there is a, well, maybe look at the documentation, but there is a command called write video. So if you have a single frame of video, you can call write video, pass in the video object, and then the current frame, which is either a black and white or a color image. And that will write the video one frame at a time. What that means is you don't have to have the entire video in memory all at once. And that's it. I think I will conclude there. And uh, if uh, students have questions, please uh, send me uh, questions through email or come to my office or you can raise them in class. But I think I will end the, uh, this lab. It's gone on long enough. We'll go ahead and stop here. Thank you for listening.